The stair step elements are found in these two triangular blocks with a stair step here. The metalloids are taken from the elements here in the middle. We will start with the poor metals, a common name given to the softer metals with a lower melting temperature. Polonium is often included in the poor metals, but we will group it with the other heavy radioactive elements. Aluminum from alum, the ancient aluminum compound used to heal wounds. Aluminum is the most abundant metal on earth, even more than iron, but separating aluminum is quite difficult. It was so rare that a small bar of aluminum used to be on display next to the French crown jewels. Aluminum production is now relatively inexpensive. 30% of all aluminum makes cars, trucks, and aircraft. It is very malleable and easily formed, so another 25% is in aluminum foil, soda cans, and other containers. North Americans pronounce it aluminum. Elsewhere they say aluminium. Aluminum is separated from the ore bauxite through electrolysis. Gallium from Gallia, meaning France, where it was discovered. And it also means rooster, named after the discoverer Lecoq, whose name meant rooster. When a little electricity is touched to the compound gallium arsenide, parts of the crystal will, incredibly, light up. Seal a chip of the crystal in plastic and you've got an LED, a light-emitting diode. Nearly all gallium is used to make gallium arsenide crystals. Gallium also makes amazing mirrors. Five metals are liquid at or near room temperature. Cesium, rubidium, francium, mercury, and gallium. A chunk of gallium will melt in your hand. And a spoon made of gallium? Well, let's see. Indium, named for the distinctive blue indigo spectral color exactly here. Like gallium, indium is very soft and also quite sticky. Evaporated onto glass, it also makes excellent mirror surfaces. The compound of indium plus tin creates indium tin oxide, a transparent metal. Tiny strands are used on the surfaces of flat panel displays, touch panels and liquid crystal displays so you can't see them. Indium is used as solder and in solar cells converting pulses of light into electrical signals. Thallium, meaning green twig, named after the beautiful green spectral line found exactly here, which identified the element. The pleasant name is somewhat deceptive as thallium and its compounds are extremely poisonous. Even contact with the skin is dangerous. Thallium was widely used for rat and ant poisoning but has since been banned. It is odorless and tasteless giving no warning of its presence. Some industrial and medical uses exist. 
but the line between the toxic and therapeutic use of thallium is very small. There is an antidote to thallium poisoning. It is the paint pigment called Prussian blue. The meaning of the name tin has been lost in history. The symbol SN comes from stin, the ancient word for this metal. Most tin is alloyed with lead to make solder. Tin cans are actually steel cans with a thin coat of corrosion resistant tin, and so called tin foil is actually cheaper aluminum foil. Before plastic, most toys were made from tin. Modern windows are made by floating molten glass on a bed of molten tin to produce a perfectly flat surface. Tin plus copper makes bronze, like this bronze statue of Auguste Rodin's The Thinker. Tin plus a little copper or lead or antimony makes pewter. Pewter was used as tableware for centuries until glass replaced it in day to day life. Just like carbon comes as an allotrope of diamond and graphite, so tin has two allotropes the familiar shiny white metal and a crumbly gray non metallic powder. At temperatures below 56 degrees Fahrenheit, pure tin will automatically change from the shiny version into the gray powder form in a startling transformation the old timers called tin pest, tin disease, or tin plague, and you can see why. Historically, tin pest caused decomposition of church pipe organs and even buttons on military garments. Tin pest is avoided by mixing small amounts of antimony, bismuth, or even lead with the tin, which prevents the change at lower temperatures. Lead. PB is the symbol from the Latin plumbum, where we get the word plumber but the word lead itself is of uncertain origin and meaning. An ancient soft metal used for water pipes, roofing, paints, carvings, and artwork, like this huge lead statue of Louis XIV in Paris, France. Lead is poisonous, so its use has been reduced, but it is still found in batteries, bullets, as a shield against x-rays, and in leaded glassware, though it can leach out of the glass and into the food. Bismuth. It probably means white lump, but nobody is really certain. Bismuth looks white with a pinkish tinge, but underneath the uniform surface is an amazing iridescent crystal structure. Using acid to etch the top exposes the crystal structure beneath. Bismuth is used in many cosmetics, 
and in over-the-counter medicines for stomach problems, commonly known as pink bismuth. Bismuth alloys tend to have a low melting temperature. These metals are used in metal fire sprinkler systems and electrical fuses. Lead and bismuth are the very last stable elements before the heavy radioactive elements begin. The non-metals, they are formed by the top triangle in the main group, and, as you can imagine, none of them are metals. Carbon, taken from the Latin carbo, meaning charcoal. It is sometimes called the king of elements. Carbon is the foundational element for life, and more compounds are made with carbon than all the other elements combined. Over 10 million known substances, so many that an entire branch of chemistry is devoted to their study. Organic chemistry, the study of compounds with carbon in them. Three common forms or allotropes of carbon are amorphous, graphite, and diamond. There seems to be no limit to the size and shape of molecules that can be made with carbon, the king of elements. Nitrogen. Alchemists used nitric acid in many experiments. They called it aquafortis, or strong water. And when element number seven was discovered inside of nitric acid, they named it nitrogen, the nitric acid maker. Nitrogen makes up 78% of the air we breathe almost 80 percent, and it is one of the most non-reactive elements that isn't a noble gas, fortunately. Manufacturers extract it from common air through distillation. Nitrogen is used mostly in ammonia as an agricultural fertilizer. Liquid nitrogen is used to freeze other materials. Oxygen means acid maker, as oxygen was wrongly thought to be a component in every acid. Colorless, odorless, tasteless. Oxygen makes up 21% of the air. With nitrogen, these two elements make up 99% of our air. The remaining 1% is mostly the noble gas argon, with traces of about a dozen other gases. That means if your hand represented the air, your four fingers would be nitrogen, the thumb would be oxygen, the nail on your pinky would be argon, and several freckles would be traces of the other gases. Essential for life, over half of your body weight is oxygen, mostly combined with hydrogen to form water. As unlikely as it sounds, oxygen is actually paramagnetic, meaning that oxygen is weakly attracted to magnetic fields. By reducing the temperature to around minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit, nitrogen and oxygen become liquid. Notice how this strong laboratory magnet has no effect on liquid nitrogen. But liquid oxygen, this nice bluish liquid, is attracted. As a liquid, oxygen is about 4,000 times more concentrated than when it was a gas and, 
being paramagnetic, you can see its attraction to the poles of this magnet. Phosphorus, Greek for brings light, as white or yellow phosphorus glows in the dark, as depicted in this painting by Joseph Wright. It is also highly reactive, as depicted in this war training photo. Red phosphorus is more stable. Strike Anywhere matches combine the red phosphorus on the match itself. Strike a rough surface and it ignites. Safety matches remove the red phosphorus and mixed with a little powdered glass, they put it on the outside of the box. An average adult stores about two pounds of essential phosphorus compounds in his body. Compounds, not the pure element. Swallowing even a speck of white phosphorus can easily cause death. Sulfur, probably from the Arabic word for yellow, one of the few elements found pure in nature like in these volcanic sulfur vents. When the hot gas reaches cold air, it changes back into a solid. Burning sulfur produces a very strong odor. Both onions and garlic get their smell from sulfur compounds. So does a skunk for that matter. Sulfur actually has few industrial uses. 85% is converted into sulfuric acid, used primarily for manufacturing fertilizers. It is also a component of gunpowder. Essential for life, the average human carries about 5 ounces of sulfur in their body. Selenium since tellurium below it was named after the Earth, this sister element was given the Greek name for our moon. Selenium comes either as a silvery metal or a red powder. Selenium's ability to conduct electricity is affected by the amount of light shining on it. The brighter the light, the better selenium conducts electricity. This makes it perfect for photo detectors and light meters in cameras and copiers. Our bodies need about 14 milligrams of selenium to sustain life. A single Brazil nut will give you your daily requirement of selenium. Metalloids, or the sort of like metals, run along a diagonal line right through the stair step elements. Metalloids can be made to conduct electricity under the right conditions. Boron, from borax, a Persian word for white, the color of borax. Pure boron is a dark powder or crystal and is used in a wide variety of applications. Most boron is used in the production of insulating fiberglass and glassware, like this tough heat-resistant Pyrex glass. Some boron compounds are super hard and used in bulletproof vests. A 20-mule team used to pull wagons of borax from Death Valley, California in the 1800s, prompting the name of a popular laundry detergent. In the 1950s, the boron compound pentaborane was used as a highly volatile rocket fuel, but it was also extremely toxic, being lethal on contact. Chemists called it the green dragon. So, not all boron compounds are boring.
Silicon. Silicon is the Latin word for flint. Silicon is glassy, like flint, and it is the second most abundant element in the Earth's crust, second only to oxygen. Ultra pure silicon is one of the best materials to make transistors and computer chips. Most silicon is used as an alloy in aluminum and steel for added strength and low shrinkage. Silicon and silicone are often confused. Silicon is the natural element, strong and brittle. Silicone is a man-made soft rubbery compound with silicon as one component. Silicon is usually found in quartz crystals. When you see sparkles in the sand, you are usually looking at tiny pieces of quartz made largely of silicon. Germanium. From Germany, where it was discovered. Germanium is used to manufacture high-end camera lenses, fiber optic systems, and solar panels. Germanium was used to build the world's very first transistor, considered by many to be the greatest invention of the 20th century. Transistors are the on-off switches allowing the binary code that runs your computer, much like a spray nozzle is the on-off switch for your water hose. Enough transistors are built each year to give 60 million of them to every man, woman, and child on Earth. Arsenic. Arsenic is Persian, meaning gold-colored, referring to the color of arsenic's main ore. Arsenic was long used by the ruling classes to secretly poison each other. Arsenic has been called the poison of kings and the king of all poisons. Easy detection methods now exist, however. Nearly all industrial uses of arsenic have slowly been replaced or banned, including the most common use as a wood preservative. Some medical uses for arsenic still exist, however. When added to other metalloids, arsenic makes semiconductors run faster. Heated arsenic smells like garlic. Antimony. The symbol SB is from stibium, meaning a mark for its ancient use as an eyeliner. The real meaning of the word antimony has been lost. Antimony is, of course, a semi-metal and used in the semiconductor industry. It is shiny silver but can be prepared as a black powder. Antimony poisoning resembles arsenic poisoning. Most antimony is used in manufacturing flame retardant fabrics and plastics. Antimony also makes lead stronger and harder and is commonly used in car battery lead and ammunition bullets. Antimony adds a clear glaze to beads, vases, and glassware. Or you can use it to put a dark line on your eyelid. Tellurium, from the Latin tellus, meaning earth in honor of our home planet. Of course, tellurium is used as a semiconductor as it is a semi-metal. It can be made to conduct electricity when you want it to. Most tellurium is alloyed with steel or copper, making them easier to work with. Tellurium also makes soft rubber into hardened car tires. Tellurium is one of the few elements that naturally combines with gold. It is mildly toxic and absorbing even a tiny amount gives you tellurium breath, a strong garlic onion odor to your breath that will last for weeks.